This is part four of our selection programming series, and we're going to be looking at the checkbox component. So in Word, you might have come across this dialog box whenever you wanted to change the font. And I want to bring your attention particularly to those effects in the middle of the dialog box. Yeah, those ones over there. We can actually focus on just the double strike through ones. So let's look at that one. Those components are called checkboxes. Yeah, checkboxes are normally used when you want to select or deselect an option. So at the moment, you can see that the double strike through box is deselected. It's not selected, which means that the text, the preview text Arial, has got no double strike through through it. If we want to put a double strike through in our um, text effect, then you would click on double strike through and it will put a little tick inside of it. And if it does that, you'll notice that the Arial now has the two lines going through it because we've affected, we've selected that particular effect. And so that's basically how you would use a checkbox or when you would use a checkbox, if you want to select or deselect an option. Okay, so what are the, the properties of a checkbox? Well, yeah, we've got a checkbox component or T checkbox if you're looking Delphi, and that's what it would look like. And so the first property you must remember all your components, you need to change its name. And just like with an edit box, we use a particular prefix like EDT with the edit box. With the checkbox, we intend to use the CBX prefix so that we know that we are dealing with a checkbox. The other property is the caption property. That's the property of what is displayed to the user. So in that diagram, you see the word checkbox one, that's the text that is displayed. That's what you would change the caption if you want to change whatever that text is. And then the other property, this is the most important one, is the checked property. Now, this is a Boolean value. And so the checked value is either true or it's false. And if it is false, then it will look like it does at the moment. The block will be empty. But if we change the checked property to true, then the tick will appear. So that's how we will set it up in the object inspector. But if we write in code, what would we do? Well, we would check if the checkbox component, the CBX example, if it's dot check property is true, if that is true, that means that we know that there's a tick in that checkbox, then we could run the appropriate statements. And if we wanted something to happen, if it wasn't selected, we could run the else part. So let's see how we apply this to Delphi. So yeah, I've got a couple of checkboxes over here. So there's a CBX, if I click on it, what does it say? CBX visible. Now, I want to run code whenever we click on the checkbox. If we want the checkbox to execute when the checkbox changes, you can just double click on the checkbox and it will take you to the code for that. Okay, so let's take all the stuff that we don't need. Wait, so if this checkbox is visible, what do we want to do? What does it say? We want to show the button. So at the moment, we've set the property of the checkbox. You can look over here at the object inspector. You can see that the checkbox property is true. And if I take it off, you see the tick goes away if I make it false. So at the moment it says show the button because this button is visible. What button is it called? It's called BTN random. But if I click on this button, if this is if this is ticked, I want that button to appear. But if it's not ticked, I want that button to disappear. So when it's ticked, we must see the button. If it's not ticked, we mustn't see the button. So the code for this is if that checkbox, what checkbox is it? It's the visible checkbox. If it's checked property, equals true, not true, true, then what do we want to do? We want to do, we want to say, hey, btn visible, no, it's a btn random, I think it was, random, its visible property must be set to true, okay, else, If it's not true, if the checkbox is false, then we want to set the visible property of this to false. Say, hey, if it's not checked, make it false. Make the visible property false. Now, I know there's an easier way to do this, but this is just to demonstrate how checkboxes work when you're using those properties. So if the checked, if there's a tick, make the button visible. If it's no tick, make it invisible. Let's just run it to see if it works. It's running, it's running, it's running. Let's go, go, go. go. Wait so long, just for a checkbox. Okay, so see it's visible. If I click on it, button disappears. If I click on it again, and that code is executed when you click on the checkbox. Okay, and because 
the checkbox property is a boolean already you technically don't even need to put this equal true you could actually leave it like this and it will still work now i know that doesn't look like a condition but this is a boolean in itself so if that whole it's technically a condition if that thing is true it will run the true part so you could do that if you wanted to okay actually in a much easier way of doing this code you could actually do all that code in one line by just saying cdx or btn visible sorry you change btn uh, random dot visible property is equal to whatever the checkboxes value is what is checked value is you could actually that's how you would do it in one line but i wanted to show you how a checkbox works if you're using if statements okay now what happens in this case in this case we can say add 10 percent at the moment when we run the code that's going to display the total. So it displays, hey, the total is 120. Now I want the code not to run when I click on here. I want to use the information from here in my calculation. So, so I'm not actually writing any code on this on this checkbox, but I've got a checkbox. It's check CBX add 10 perk. So when I click on the display total button, so here we go, we total is equal to 120. And that's what we're going to display. But if they've clicked on the add 10%, if they clicked on that checkbox, we want to add on 10%. So I'm going to say if CBX add 10% dot checked, not comma checked, dot checked. If that value is true, then we must add on 10%. Add on 10% to our total. How do we add on 10%? Well, our total is equal to, equal to, how, how do we work out 10%? Well, 10%, 10 percent is 10 divided by 100 10 percent of the total of means times of the total so that means 10 percent of the total so that's the amount we must add on to we're going to take that 10 percent and add it on to our total so this is working out the 10 percent part of our total so 10 percent of 120 would be 12 rand so we're working out 12 rand and we're taking that 12 rand and adding it onto our total. So this code will only be done if that checkbox is ticked. If it's not ticked, it will skip this and just show the 120. So let's see if that works. So we're expecting, if there's no add 10%, no 10%, then it's just going to display the 120. Hey, 120. But if we click add 10%, it's going to calculate 12 rand, take that 12 rand, add it onto 120 and display 132. I think if my math is correct urethra i mean rika there we go it's correct so there we go there's how you do a checkbox for the other videos in this video series as well as other rt related videos go to our youtube channel subscribe to us um, give us your feedback and remember to also follow us on facebook and twitter um, yeah and remember don't do it the long way do it the mr long way